Hey, hello once again. This is Mrs. Talawe. And today we are going to talk about the artistic and creative literacy. This is one of the core topic in the subject building and enhancing new literacies across the curriculum. You know, teaching in the 21st century learners is a challenge for educators. And as educators, we need to create classrooms that will maximize the success of all students and will accommodate a diverse range of skills, needs, and interests. Incorporating arts education will not just actively engage students in teaching and learning process, but will also enhance their creativity and be able to express their feelings and thoughts in a meaningful way. The prime function of arts education is to introduce students to the arts world, a world where they are able to learn about dance, drama, media, music, visual art, and design. And from various arts experiences, develop their own artistic capabilities. The inclusion of quality arts program and the types of thinking developed therein uniquely meet the needs of the 21st century learner by not only providing experiences and opportunities for today's students to be engaged, but to thrive. The arts make all kinds of learning exciting. Right, here are our uh, three learning outcomes. Number one, we have to characterize artistic literacy. Second, discuss the value of arts to education and practical life. Third, identify approaches to developing designing curriculum that cultivates the arts and creativity among learners. Okay, our learning content. So this module equips teachers with ways to maximize students' creative potential and critical literacy through activities involving the arts. So the following are topics to be discussed. Topic one, valuable lessons or benefits of arts to education. Topic two, characterizing artistically literate individuals. And the third topic is issues in teaching creativity. All right, we proceed to the first one, valuable lessons or benefits of arts in education. Now for us to understand deeply the arts of education, here are the definitions of artistic literacy. Right, we have here, Artistic literacy is defined in the National Coalition for Core Arts Standards, a conceptual framework for arts learning 2014. A conceptual framework for arts learning 2014 as the knowledge and understand required to participate authentically in the arts while individuals can learn dance, media, music, theater and visual arts through reading print texts, artistic literacy requires that they are engaged in artistic creation processes directly through the use of materials. For examples of these are charcoal or paint or clay, musical instruments or scores, and in specific spaces we have concert halls, stages, dance rehearsal spaces, art studios, and computer labs. Researchers have recognized that there are significant benefits of arts, learning, and engagement in schooling. What are those? The flexibility of the forms comprising the arts position students to embody a range of literate practices to use their mind in verbal and non-verbal ways communicate complex ideas in a variety of forms, understand words, sounds, or images, imagine new possibilities, and persevere to reach goals and make them happen. 
The following are summarized by Elliot Eisner into eight valuable lessons or benefits that education can learn from arts. So we have here number one, forms and content cannot be separated. Uh, all of these eight valuable lessons or benefits uh, will be explained in a separate slide. The second valuable lesson is everything interacts. The third is nuance matters. Number four, surprise is not to be seen as an intruder in the process of inquiry, but as a part of the rewards one reaps when working artistically. Slowing down perception. Okay, the limits of language. Somatic experience. And number eight, we have open-ended tasks permit the exercise of imagination. All right, so we go back to number one here. Number one, form and content cannot be separated. How something is said or done shapes the content of experience. In education, how something is taught, how curricula are organized, and how schools are designed impact upon what students will learn. These side effects may be the real main effects of practice. Second, everything interacts. There is no content without form and no form without content. When the content of a form is changed, so too is the form altered. Form and content are like two sides of a coin. So everything interacts. The third one, we have the new ones matters. To extent to which teaching is an art, attention to new ones is critical. It can also be said that the aesthetic lives in the details that the maker can shape in the course of the creation. How a word is spoken, how a gesture is made, how a line is written, and how melody is played all affect the character of the whole. All depend upon the modulation of the nuances that constitutes the act. Right. All right. Next, number four, we have here a surprise is not to be seen as an intruder in the process of inquiry, but as a part of the rewards one reaps when working artistically. Educators should not resist surprise, but create the conditions to make it happen. It is one of the most powerful sources of intrinsic satisfaction. Number fifth is slowing down perception is the most promising way to see what is actually there. It is true that we have certain words to designate high levels of intelligence, and we describe somebody as being swift or bright or sharp or fast on the pickup. A speed in its swift state is a descriptor for those who call smart. Yet one of the qualities we ought to be promoting in our school is a slowing down of perception. That's the ability to take one time, to smell the flowers, to really perceive in the Dewayan sense and not merely to recognize one looks at. Number six, we know that we can tell in common terms, literacy refers essentially to the ability to read and to write, but literacy can be reconceptualized as the creation and use of a form of representation that will enable one to create meaning, meaning that will not take the impress of language in its conventional form. In addition, literacy is associated with high-level forms of cognition, and we tend to think that in order to know, one has to be able to say. However, as Paul O'Neill 1969 remind us, we know more than we can tell. The seventh 
uh, benefit that we can derive is the somatic experience. This is one of the most important indicators that someone has gotten right related to the multiple ways in which we represent the word through the multiple forms of literacy. As the way in which we come to know the word through entailments of our body, sometimes one knows a process or an event through one's skin. And the last is open-ended tasks permit the exercise of imagination and ex exercise of the imagination is one of the most important of human aptitudes. You know, imagination is the source of new possibilities. In the arts, imagination is a primary virtue. So it should be in the teaching of mathematics, in all in the sciences, in history, and indeed in virtual all that humans create. This achievement would require for its realization a culture of schooling in which the imagin imaginative aspects of the human condition were made possible. All right, so what's next now? We are already on the second. Characterizing artistically literate individuals. So I, I would have to ask you, how would you characterize an artistically literate a student? So many classroom teachers regularly incorporate arts activities just like music, movements, and dance, drama, theater, visual art into their teaching. And me, myself, I'm doing those some of those that I have mentioned. Those who describe how their students become more interested and involved with the learning at hand, and by doing so, markedly increase literacy skills. These teachers also report that their students are more likely to remember the content they are learning because they are able to create and actively express the deeper meaning of that content through a drawing, painting, movement, dramatization, singing, group projects, and more. Simply put, learning with and through the arts enlivens instruction, increases student involvement, and depends both the meaning and memory of the learning at hand. Now, may I ask you, how would you characterize an artistic literate student? Literature on art education and art standards in education cited the following as common traits of artistically literate individuals. All right, so we have your number one. They use a variety of artistic media, also symbols, metaphors to communicate their own ideas and respond to the artistic communication of others. They also develop a creative personal realization in at least one art form in which they continue active involvement in an adult. The next one we have to cultivate culture history, and other connection through diverse forms and genres of artwork. Find joy, inspiration, peace, intellectual stimulation, and meaning when they participate in the arts and seek ex artistic experiences and support the arts in their communities. So those are the common traits of artistically literate individuals. Okay, next we have issues in teaching creativity. You know, arts can function as mode of communications. Creative ideas are expressed through visual images, sounds, movement, and drama. And with the assistance of technology are presented in various forms in the electronic medium. While humans usually communicate verbally, they also use the arts to express their feelings. On the other hand, body language, vocal inflection, and graphic representation 
can enhance verbal interaction, but arts expression can also present ideas and meanings that are embedded within the art form itself. In the famous TED Talks on Creativity and Innovation, Sir Ken Robinson stressed paradigms in the education system that hamper the development of creative capacity among learners. He emphasized that schools stigmatize mistakes. This primarily prevents students from trying and coming up with original ideas. Because of this painful truth, Robinson challenged educators to educate the well-being of learners and shift from the conventional learnings toward academic ability alone. Give equal weight to the arts, the humanities, and to the physical education. Facilitate learning and work towards stimulating curiosity among learners, awaken and develop powers of creativity among learners, and views intelligence as diverse, dynamic, and distinct, contrary to common belief that it should be academic ability geared. Okay, now according to Doria, 2001 and Anderson, they proposed four essential components to developing or designing curriculum that cultivates students' artistic creative literacy. These approaches actively encourage the creative, constructive thinking involved in meaning which are fundamental to the development of the systems of reading, writing, and numbering. Okay, let's talk about imagination and pretense, fantasy, and metaphor. A creative curriculum will not simply allow, but will actively support play and playfulness. The teacher will plan for learning and teaching opportunities for children to be at once who they are and who they are not. Transforming reality building narratives, and mastering and manipulating signs and symbol system. Second, active menu to meaning making. In a classroom where children can choose to draw, write, paint, or play in the way that suits their purpose and or mood, literacy learning and arts learning will inform and support each other. Third, intentional holistic teaching. A creative curriculum requires a creative teacher who understands the creative processes and purposely supports learners in their experiences. Intentional teaching does not mean drill and rote learning and indeed endless rate learning exercises might indicate the very opposite of intentional teaching. What makes for intentional teaching is thoughtfulness and purpose, and this could occur in such activities as reading a story, adding a prop, drawing children's attention to a spider web, and playing with rhythm and rhyme. Even the thoughtful and intentional imposing of constraints can lead to creativity. Oh, next, co-player, co-artists. Educators must be reminded of the importance of understanding children as current citizens with capacities and capabilities in the here and now. It is vital for teachers to know and appreciate children and what they know by being mindful of the present and making time for a conversation, interacting with the children as they draw. Teachers must try to avoid letting the busy management work of their days take 
precedence and distract them from the being. Okay. Now let us summarize what we have learned for today. We can um, uh, say that creativity can be defined as the process of having original ideas that have value. Also, all children have capacity for innovation and creativity, and the school should work toward educating the whole being of the child. Okay, I'll be posting your activity and group work in your Google Classroom, so please uh, stay tuned and um, visit your Google Classroom to, to, to check whether your, uh, your activities are already posted. And I'll be also forwarding this to our Facebook group chat. Okay. Uh, for recommended learning materials and resources for supplementary reading, um, you can um, uh, visit the web link that I have posted in our Google Classroom, uh, the book of Ainer EW 2002, What Can Education Learn from the Arts Through the, through the Practice of Education? And... The Encyclopedia of Informal Education retrieved from um, HTTPS, www in Fed or Biblio Eisner Arts and the Practice of Education, HTM. We also have uh, Robinson K2006, Do School Skill Creativity. And for your, uh, you, will, you will be expecting a quiz. And we also have our references, Ellen Joy Alata and Eigen, Hi, Eigen John Ignacio 2019. First edition, Building and Enhancing New Literacies Across the Curriculum. First edition, Rex Bookstore. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me in our chat box. And I'll be glad to answer all your questions if we can and as needed. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Keep safe and God bless.